saying that uh, there's a humanitarian crisis there because of sarin gas and uh, the exposure that that sarin gas possibly came from Saudi Arabia, but it certainly didn't look like the militarized or weaponized stuff that the Syrian forces would have. There were leaked reports that came out of the U.S. government that pushed back the people within the U.S. government pushing back against the uh, Obama administration, the people in that who were pushing for war. So we had a lot of pushback as the alternative media, as Infowars and others stood up and exposed this. People within the government leaked information to show that this was a false flag. We had congressmen and former uh, congressmen like uh, Dennis Kucinich. We had Ted Cruz and others talking about us not being the air force for Al Qaeda in Syria. And yet, Obama is not giving up on that either. Now he's going to send a half a billion dollars to train these good Al Qaeda that are in Syria. Well, yeah, and he's talking about airstrikes in Syria as well. So mm -hmm. the the big myth, of course, is that there are any moderate rebels to begin with. Right. There, there, right. there were at the start of the conflict, the kind of political bloc. But the the moderate rebels, most of them defected to the terrorist organizations like Jabhat al-Nusra. We documented that over the past two years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the so-called moderate FSA commander plucking the internal organ out of his victim and eating it on camera, that's what they categorize as moderate, then God forbid what the extremists are up to. So again, the money, the arms are going to these so-called moderate groups who then pledge allegiance publicly to the terrorists, defect to the terrorists, and even the ones who don't, as The Guardian reported, they're being commanded, they're being taught how to carry out suicide attacks, terrorist attacks by the extremist faction. So you cannot differentiate between the moderates and the extremists when the two go hand in hand. They're allied with each other. And that's how ISIS has been allowed to grow because they've swallowed up more and more of the so-called moderates, radicalized them. Now they're moving on. They've moved to Iraq. They've seized Mosul, a key town in Iraq. And now it's being used again to create the justification to send U.S. troops back into Iraq because you know, the, the permanent military bases that they set up there after the 2003 invasion, the U.S. government, they were never really meant to be scaled back. That's why you see now Cheney and all these neocons in the media talking about how we now need to go back in because they never planned to pull out in the first place. This was always going to be a decades long occupation. So now they've got the convenient excuse of ISIS terrorizing the entire country as a result of their blowback policy. They trained some of them in Jordan in 2012, as I said before. And now Obama's saying that he doesn't need to get approval from Congress to send US troops back into Iraq indefinitely, just as he did uh, before the attack on Libya, totally disregarded Congress, said he didn't need any authorization. And we now see that same process unfolding again. And as I said, uh, receiving numerous emails now from veterans who say their sons are being told they will be deployed to Iraq within the next six to eight months. You know, that's a recurring theme, isn't it, that Obama says he doesn't need congressional author authorization or legal authorization to do anything. I mean, this whether it's the borders, whether it's the war in Iraq, whether it's... Uh, uh, the NDAA, you know, he gives himself legal authorization to have people detained indefinitely in America. And he says, don't worry, I'm not going to use that. Well, we're kind of worried because he doesn't, in most cases, doesn't even need to have uh, legal authorization. He claims to do whatever he wishes. So when he gives himself legal authorization to do something like the NDAA, I think people get very worried about that. But of course, Paul, your point that they never planned on getting out of there, I think is well taken. I mean, why would you build a nearly billion dollar embassy fortress right there in the middle of Baghdad and put 5,000 people there if you really weren't planning on staying there for a long time. And they're saying that they're going to stay in Afghanistan for a couple of more decades. They're upfront about that. Exactly. I mean, I mean, read PNAC, Iraq and Afghanistan were just the first two on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. So this is about the ingrained occupation of the Middle East. It's about controlling that key region. And this is merely the latest excuse which they're using in, in which to go in. And people expect troops to be deployed to Iraq. I mean, there was a Fox News poll this week, 70% of Americans believe that US troops will be sent back to Iraq. So with this media narrative of ISIS being the big threat, yesterday we talked about 
you know, ISIS are going to invade the US and then everybody will be happy about how the police are militarized. They've really conditioned people to accept this this new threat, which they created in order to grease the skids for both domestic repression and geopolitical occupation. You know, I, I guess as I look at this, it's just becoming so obviously transparent. When you look at what ISIS is, it's, you know, they want an integrated Syria and Iraq. And so at the same time, he's saying we have to escalate and reoccupy Iraq and go back in and fight because ISIS is there. He's also funding those same rebels inside Syria and going to send them a half a billion dollars. I mean, how is it that he can get away with this in the mainstream media? Of course, they're controlled. They're, they're mockingbird press and, and they do whatever the government wants them to do. But it's just amazing to me how blatant the lies are now. This isn't like it happened and then the other part of it happened a few years down the road and people can't put the pieces together. They're happening simultaneously. We're going to be right back after the break talking to Paul Joseph Watson. And we're also going to talk about negative interest rates in Europe. And we told you where that was headed. Stay with us. So my elementary school-aged child is begging me for a cell phone. Please, Mom, please. All the kids have them. But I've seen the research, and it makes sense to me that any mobile device that operates using electromagnetic frequencies that close to me or my child's head needs to be blocked. Harmful wireless radiation is real. Protect yourself and your loved ones with Block It Pocket. Call 888-315-9618. Free shipping to the lower 48. BlockItPocket.com. Enhancing health and privacy. Clean water at home, clean water at the office, clean water on the go. The Berkey Guy has a Berkey water filtration model for anywhere you are and one that fits any budget. Thousands of satisfied customers can't be wrong. For free shipping within the U.S., go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. How long would you last? If all grocery stores cease to exist. Not in America. This can't happen in America. Because of my concern about our government, I was looking at survival stuff. I was raised as a Girl Scout, and their motto was to be prepared. Food for Patriots was an opportunity for me to be able to put some things aside. I said, well, this is a product worth having, seeing as it's so good. Like the pricing for what I got. I like the containers they were shipped in. They keep in touch with you. You get your emails. You get your confirmations. The customer service is just absolutely fantastic. Plan on buying probably about uh, four more of these minimum. And it just came so quick. It came right when they said it would come. Thanks for supplying all this stuff for us because I think we're all going to be needing it in a very short time. Join over 50,000 Americans who have trusted food for patriots. Go to GetSurvivalFood.com to learn more. That's GetSurvivalFood.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight in Austin. I'm joined with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. And we've just been talking about the gradual sliding, metastasizing mission creep, I guess you could say, of uh, re-escalating the war in Iraq. We see that Obama is going to be sending half a billion dollars to Syria. And of course, ISIS is trying to integrate Iraq and Syria. And we see also uh, mission creep in terms of the number of uh, soldiers. At first, there were not going to be any. Then we heard there were going to be 300 soldiers sent, then 500. And now 
Watson has an article up on Infowars.com. He's been sent information by people who have uh, family in the military or who are in the military saying that they're being told that their entire units are being trained for deployment. One of them was specifically uh, saying in February. So this is uh, looks like they're going to start that up again. It looks like, Paul, that he is making... Uh, other people's enemies, his enemies. You know, when we interviewed the author of The Color Purple, she said, uh, she spoke at his inauguration. One of the things she said was, don't make other people's enemies yours. It looks like he's doing that in spades, isn't he? Well, exactly. I mean, we've documented it from the start. They always planned this humanitarian intervention of Syria based on a chemical weapons attack. You remember at the end of August, it seemed almost inevitable that that would be used to go in. Thankfully, it was derailed at the last minute, as he said earlier, from people on the inside, actually. I don't think it was completely public pressure. Obviously, the, the world was dead set against it, but it seemed like people inside the U.S. military uh, kind of derailed that inevitable, it seemed, attack on Syria. But now he's trying to go back in with a different justification by pumping up this fear-mongering about ISIS, which, again, the U.S. government trained some of those terrorists in Jordan back in 2012. Now, you know, we just had that story yesterday. You and I talked a little bit about uh, where this law enforcement training agency tweeted out, you know, hey, people were upset that uh, SWAT teams threw a flashbang grenade into the crib of an 18 month old and critically injured him, uh, still struggling for life. But hey, they're going to have a different story when ISIS comes home. Well, what, what's your take on this article that's up on Infowars.com today? This is an interview that uh, Rob Dew and uh, Joe Biggs and Kit Daniels have put up on Infowars with uh, Border Patrol uh, Union Vice President out in El Paso saying that they're using this oh, these collapsed borders to smuggle in whatever they want and whoever they want. Well, I mean, it's like the story we had last week, wasn't it, where they were bussing them in. Uh, there's another story actually on prisonplanet.com, all of the net jobs gains in the U.S. since 2000 have gone to immigrants. Yeah. Since 2000, all of the net jobs added by the U.S. economy have gone to immigrants. So whereas um, the U.S. population has lost jobs domestically, the ones that new jobs created can all be accounted for by the influx of these millions of immigrants. So again... I mean, it, it's, it's shocking. You had the story today about a Mexican military helicopter attacking U.S. Border Patrol, actually flying into the U.S. They said, of course, it was an accident. They apologized right, for it. Right. They were chasing drug dealers. <laughs> so it's it's only escalating, isn't it? Yeah. And, and when he's talking about they can get whoever and whatever they want, and, and he says... We don't know what or who is coming in, and we won't know until something bad happens. I'm reminded of this article that we had out of uh, the Australian. Uh, I've got a reference here. Back in December, this last December, here's the headlines. Deadly radioactive medical material stolen in Mexico, and it sparks terror fears. I mean, we've got a wide open border there. And they're using, according to this interview, that we're going to uh, we're going to have them on later in the program. We're going to have Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, who did the interview. We're going to be talking to him in the third hour, and he's going to give us uh, a little bit more information. And you aren't going to believe what else this guy told them. That's with the uh, Border Patrol uh, Union down there in El Paso. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to have Dr. Peter Bregan, a psychiatrist, and he's going to talk to us about, about SSRI drugs and their role in mass murders. Thank you so much, Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. Thank you. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. Infowars building independent media operations. You let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called Infowars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what 
propaganda they put out intellectually. It's because you can feel it. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network.